my uh, op-ed today published over at HartmanReport.com and uh, also published over at TheNewRepublic.com uh, is titled, Dictators, uh, Even Those Who Start Out as a Dictator for a Day Play for Keeps. And uh, this is about what, hap what has happened over the past weekend, really. Um, uh, the RNC held an annual fundraiser at mar a Lardo this weekend, and uh, it was attended by a, a number of Republican senators and members of Congress, um, uh, along with a handful, you know, half a dozen or so uh, of vice presidential wannabes. Uh, Tim Scott, one of them, and he weirdly went on uh, uh, one of the Sunday political shows. It wasn't Face the Nation, but it was, it was one of the big network shows and six times in a row refused to say if he would accept the results of the 2024 election if Trump loses, which is really a bad sign. I mean, this guy is a United States senator. You expect senators to be, you know, thoughtful, serious, uh, you know, concerned about the fate and future of democracy and the United States, just openly sucking up to a guy who is using dictatorial language. Anyhow, Trump uh, uh, had the, you know, he, he went on this obscenity-laden tirade, um, two of the, uh, uh, calling uh, Jack Smith an effing ass blank, um, uh, deranged, and an evil thug. Uh, he said that Joe Biden is running a Gestapo uh, administration. The Gestapo, uh, you'll recall, were the secret police uh, who were beholden to Hitler, who uh, ran the, the death camps and, and the concentration camps. Um, the Gestapo were uh, directly responsible for the deaths of millions of people, particularly six million Jews. And here you've got a former president of the United States, a candidate for president of the United States, claiming that the Biden administration, because he is being hauled into court, for, because Trump is being hauled into court for crimes that he has clearly committed, a at least in my mind. I realize everybody's innocent until proven guilty, but come on, guys. We saw all this right out in the open, um, uh, particularly, you know, his stealing documents and taking them down to Mar-a-Lago. Eileen Cannon still refuses to set a trial date. That's obviously not going to happen until after the election. Um, his, uh, his case in, in uh, New York... Uh, in Judge Tanya Chutkin's uh, courtroom, another criminal case uh, will not be held until after the first of the year because of uh, the, the way that the Supreme Court, that, that at least four Republicans on the Supreme Court have delayed all these hearings. Uh, it, it's just crazy. So then, uh, oh, and, and, and an astonishing bit of projection, Trump called Biden a Manchurian candidate. Right. Biden is uh, running for president on behalf of who? I mean, we know Trump is running for affiliation with Putin and Mohammed bin Salman and uh, President Xi and, and Kim Jong-un. I mean, you know, it's, uh, these are the people that he loves. These are the people he sucks up to. These are the people he admires. These are the people in his, in his uh, uh, rallies that he, that he speaks well of. And it's astonishing that Americans go to these rallies and applaud him when he does. But he does, you know, over and over and over again. Uh, in fact, one of the donors at this RNC retreat, and this is truly bizarre, he said, if, if, any, if any of you guys here, there's about 400 people there, and you know, uh, most of them multi, multi-millionaires, I, I believe it was $40,000 a plate, and he, he said, if any of you want to get up here on stage and say something, you can just donate a million dollars and we'll put you on stage, and two guys did. And one of them got up, and, and his uh, message was relatively short and sweet. He said, Donald J. Trump is the person God has chosen. Which raises the question, which God? On the other coast, over on the West Coast this last weekend, a secret group of billionaires got together in Hollywood at the uh, 11,000 square foot mansion of David Sachs uh, in the Hollywood Hills uh, uh, to support Trump's hatred for Joe Biden and the Democrats. The crowd included, according to Puck News, uh, immigrants, Elon Musk, who came from South Africa, David Sachs, who came from South Africa, Peter Thiel, who came from Germany, and Rupert Murdoch, who came from Australia. Uh, Puck News reporter Theodore Schleifer uh, described them as, quote, members of a burgeoning anti-Biden brain trust unified by a shared sense of grievance. 
And uh, Elon Musk, in particular, uh, is apparently and ironically particularly upset about poor black and brown people trying to achieve the American dream. Quote, this is from Puck News, quote, both in public and in private, Musk has expressed feeling deeply unnerved by America's migrant crisis, a fear that has driven his rush into Republican politics. And the issue is a key topic of discussion at the dinner, end quote. So here you've got these billionaire migrants sitting around saying, isn't it terrible that America allows migrants in? Or immigrants, I guess you could call them. It's, it's incredible. Uh, as mentioned, Saturday, as I mentioned in my Saturday report, the combined massive tax cuts by Reagan, Bush, and Trump not only racked up a $34 trillion debt for America, but also made our country's oligarchs richer than any pharaoh, king, or emperor in world history. And every time President Biden flirts with raising their taxes, the top 1%, by the way, now officially pay a lower income tax rate than working class people, they get all twitchy and they begin throwing money at Republicans. But the bottom line, and Fritz Tyson, you know, learned this in Germany and wrote a book about it called I Paid Hitler. Uh, the bottom line is Trump is not going to give these billionaires what they want over the long term. I mean, they, unless they just totally go in on a, on a Nazi agenda. Uh, Hitler turned on Tyson. I don't know why these guys think Trump won't turn on them.